Now watch. In um, Matthew chapter 12, verse 18, it says, Behold, my servant, whom I have chosen, my beloved, in whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him, and he shall show judgment to the Gentiles. Now, it's amazing because how did Jesus show judgment to the Gentiles? Now, the sad part in the church is when we hear the word judgment, we always think negative. That, that judgment was, was placed against them. No, no, no. Judgment was put on them. It was for them. That's why it says in uh, Psalm 103, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. And then he starts listing them. Who forgives all your iniquities. Who heals all your diseases who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. And look at verse 6. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. What does that mean? He rendered a judgment for them. That means he's for you. He didn't render judgment on them. He didn't render a judgment against them. He rendered a judgment for the oppressed. Why? Because he was a king. And in those days, they didn't have judges like we would think today, like a court system necessarily. The, the, the judge was the king, basically. And so people would come to the king. If they had a grievance, they would come to the king, and the king would pronounce his verdict, his judgment. And here it says the Lord will execute righteousness. In other words, he will do what is right, and, which is what is right, he will execute judgment for the, all that are oppressed. So what was he saying? Oppressed, I'm going to do the right thing. What is that? I'm going to set you free. Oppressed, you're free. So if this is true, then we ought to see this in Jesus' ministry. We ought to see him walking like a king, pronouncing judgment for the oppressed and setting the oppressed free. That's what Acts 10, 38 says. So as a king, he could pronounce a judgment. And if a king pronounced a judgment, you know, how many of you have seen the old, uh, <laughs> the old movies? So let it be written, so let it be done. Remember? And why? Because the king was pronouncing a judgment. And he says, what he's going to say is the way it'll be done. He was pronouncing the law right then. He was saying, this is the law in my kingdom. You're free. Oppressed? Don't want any oppressed in my kingdom. So if you're oppressed, today we set you free. That was a whole basis of the, the day of Jubilee, or even the year of Jubilee, was that when all the oppressed went free and all their debts were forgiven, which, funny, if you read the Lord's Prayer, what they call the Lord's Prayer, it was really the disciples' prayer because they said, Lord, teach us to pray. So the Lord taught them, and he said, at one point he was telling me, he said, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. What is that? That's the day of Jubilee. When all of the debts were forgiven and everybody received all of their goods back to them, that was what Jesus came to pronounce. 